Hello, Nikki here. Before we start today's episode, I have an announcement and a couple Patreon shout outs. <laughs> so my announcement is, uh, by the time this airs, this will be somewhat old news, but I gave notice at my day job and I will be pursuing all my other passions full time. So I would appreciate support. <laughs> um, because of that, I have a couple new Patreons, so shout out to Tracy. I love you so much, honey. Tracy's the reason I met my husband. <laughs> Robin, who's a current Patreon, but who upped her support. Thank you so much, Robin. And Pamela, a brand new Patreon patron. So thank you, Pamela. Love you, girl. Uh, I appreciate everything you say and do and your comments on my Instagram and Ravelry and everywhere else. So Thank you so much to my new Patreons, and don't forget to check me out on patreon.com slash Nikki the Death Doula. All right, enough of that. Here's today's episode. Hello, and welcome to Good Grief, the podcast dedicated to demystifying and destigmatizing grief with compassion and humor. I'm Nikki. I'm an end-of-life doula and a grief coach in Columbus, Ohio. Today, I am here to tell you to stop trying to heal from your grief. I know, there's a little bit of a clickbaity title, right? And I feel dirty for that. But <laughs> but this, this is exactly what I'm trying to tell you today, is you need to stop trying to heal from your grief. So why did I bring this up? Why, why am I saying this? Why am I even making an entire episode devoted to telling you what not to do? Well... First off, I came across an article about it, which was very timely because outside of that article, I was noticing a lot of what is mentioned in this article. So I don't spend a ton of time on social media. I, I've mentioned multiple times I do enjoy TikTok videos, and sometimes when I'm having a bad day, that's what I do. But in my line of work, the algorithms know what I do, and they know what I consume as far as media so that shows me a lot more of that type of stuff and I have come across a lot of and I hate this word grief hacks I I really despise the word hack being used so much because it's being used inappropriately and incorrectly but that's that's not why I'm here today but I have seen a ton of of content out there on grief hacks and what to do to get over your grief quicker. And it's, pardon my French, cover your children's ears. It's pissing me off. It's really upsetting me and it's doing everybody a disservice by, by saying crap like this. And, and before I get into the article and the details, everybody grieves in their own way. And I say that a lot and it's, it's very true. Okay, and we all will grieve in our own way. And that's great. And if, you, if there's something that has helped you process your grief, great. That's wonderful. And I'm incredibly happy for you. But that doesn't mean that that thing is going to work for the next person or anybody else, or especially not the masses. There is no one thing that works for everybody. There's no one thing that will, quote, cure your grief. It's just not possible. We are all individual human beings. And I'm sorry, you're just going to hear me get heated this whole episode. But we're all human beings. And we are all different. We all have different bodies, brains, chemical makeups, everything about us is unique. We, I mean, we have similarities to other folks and whatever. But it's it's much like medical treatment. One one medical treatment is going to work great for one person and not great for another. I have a lot of friends that are very excited and happy about the medications they take for their depression and anxiety, and I'm happy for them, and I'm glad that medication works for them. It never worked for me. There was one medication I took for a long time that gave me permanent neurological damage. I had allergic reactions to several others, so it's, it's a similar thing. I get upset when people are constantly saying, you have to take medications. They make everything better. Well, they made everything better for you. They didn't make everything better for everybody. So, okay. I, I, that's that's not what this podcast is about, so I won't keep preaching that. But how many times have you heard me say it on this podcast? You're not going to get over your grief. It's not going to go away. It's going to change over time. So maybe this entire episode might sound controversial, and that's fine. I, I, I expect to hear from some folks, but 
you have to understand you you can't you can't go into the grieving process thinking you're going to heal and it's going to go away and you will go back to the way you were before you will not grief doesn't go away and i say this constantly it's with you forever and you will never be the same person again but that's not necessarily a bad thing you guys it's not it's not a bad thing to be a different person grief shapes who we are and it might change us for the better okay now <laughs> let's talk a little bit about it i lied one more thing before we get in there i i know all of you out there listening to me are smart people and you know this already but i'm going to have to say it okay essential oils will not heal your grief Retre special retreats that cost thousands of dollars will not heal your grief classes and facebook groups will not heal your grief none of these things will heal your grief i'm not saying don't use essential oils go to a retreat or use a, a, a grief coach like myself go to class or jo join them i'm actually part of a, a facebook group for sibling grief that i still participate in a bit okay these things are good they're good for comfort they're good to help you they're not going to cure your grief, okay? So if you see an ad saying that you buy these essential oils from this person and it's going to make all your pain go away, it's not, <laughs> okay? And I'm sorry if you're one of those people. That's fine. I love essential oils. I have a whole collection of them and I use them for a lot of things, but I'm not going to use them to cure myself because that's not how grief works, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so let's talk about quote unquote, healing from grief. Now, this, this will seem very not like me, but I'm going to, uh, whoo, deep breaths, Nikki, you can do this. I'm going to agree with Freud on something. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know, I know, I know. It's Freud. Anyway, he has said some things that I would take very serious issue with, but he did have one stance on, on something. He, his stance on grief, I cannot agree with more. And this was in his, uh, his book, Mourning and Melancholia, which melancholia is just the term they used for depression or mental illness back in the day. Okay, brief interruption, the cat jumped up and knocked the microphone over. Anyway, so in his book, Mourning and Melancholia, he talks a bit about mourning, you know, as related to grief and depression, as we would call it now. And he, he refers to things like depression and, and melancholy, as he calls it, as something that should be treated like a med medical treatment, which, yes, but no. But he even specifically says that grief is a natural and transformational process, that it happens after loss. Again, I'm not, I'm not a Freudian person. I, I disagree with 90% of everything he said. But his stance on grief was actually pretty much in line with what I would say it is a natural process we don't need to treat it now again i had an episode on grief in the dsm and at, there is a time when grief can become something that needs to be treated more like a mental illness okay persistent grief but overall it's just something we do it's something we go through it's a natural part of our life and it transforms us and it makes us who we are i, I, I i'm repeating myself and i understand that but even ever since Freud and everything like we've had so many experts out there trying to tell us that grief isn't something we need to heal from it's not something we need to treat like a medical issue and you know there's I had a whole episode on Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and not everybody agrees with everything she says but even she was like there are processes we go through and they're not always neat and in order and this is what we do okay we need to not treat grief like a wound, which is stated directly in this article, and I will link it in the show notes. But we, we don't need to treat it like it's a boo-boo. We don't stick a band-aid on it and try to make it better, okay? Grief is a reaction to loss, plain and simple. And grief is love. Like I said, if we didn't, if, if we didn't love whatever we, it is that we lost, then we wouldn't grieve them, and it would be kind of pointless, right? Grief and grieving is not a source of pain. The source of pain is the loss, right? And we have very little, we have no control for that. We, we can't always control things that we lose. 
And grief is just how we process our losses. And another way we can view grief is it's it's almost a gift, okay? Hear me out. <laughs> I, I think I've mentioned before about how sometimes I view death as a gift because it gives us a way to, it gives us a chance to kind of reevaluate ourselves and also remember that our lives are short and none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. And it gives us time to reevaluate things and see what's important to us. And grief is a bit the same. It can help us shape our view of the world and ourselves within the world and ourselves, period. It gives us a chance to really turn inward and evaluate ourselves. It makes us help make sense of who we are alone, uh, just us individually. Because I've talked before about um, one of the parts of grieving is reevaluating you as a person without whatever it is or whoever it is that you lost, especially if it's somebody close to you, a spouse, a partner, you will have to now face yourself as a person, an individual without that person. So it gives us a, it gives us an opportunity to do that. I'm not saying it's a good thing. You know, obviously we don't want to lose our partners, our spouses, we don't want to lose anybody or anything, but it happens and it awards us an opportunity to really kind of see who we are individually. Another way to start viewing grief is grief is, is the act of healing. We're not going to heal from our grief because grief is the healing, so to speak. I feel like I'm, you know, completely negating what I said earlier. Hear me out. <laughs> Again, we're not going to heal from it, but grief is the process of, of making us feel better. Again, I don't like using words like good and bad when it comes to emotions because emotions just are. They are neither good nor bad, but our process of grieving is our way of having those emotions be less impactful and less hurtful. I'm, I'm struggling to find the right words here. <laughs> but if we if we view grief as not the bad thing, but grief as the thing that is helping us move forward without whatever it was or whoever it was we lost, then we can view grief as what it is. It's not a bad thing. It can be a great thing. Grief is also our companion. It's grief helps us remember those that we lost or those things that we lost. The grief I still feel for losses I've had in the past helps keep me connected to those things and people. And you know, I still grieve the loss of my brother and it helps me stay connected to him because he's not physically here, but he's still here. He's here with me. He's here with his kids. He's here with my parents. And that, I'm going to get emotional. Um, and that grief is what keeps him with me and what keeps him alive. You know, the, the grief I feel almost every day still for my cat. And I, you know, I can hear some eye rolls out there, but she was absolutely my soulmate and I miss her every day. But my grief that I feel for her helps keep her with me. So we need to stop trying to heal our grief, cure our grief, and we need to just hold it within us. It's not a bad thing, you guys. Grief is not bad. If you take nothing else away from this, grief is love. Because we grieve, we love. And because we loved, we grieve. Okay? Good Lord, I got all emotional there. <laughs> but that's what grief is. It's love. And I loved my brother, love my cat. And I loved all the other people I've lost in my life. And that's why I grieve. So I, I don't, yeah, grief hurts, but I can use that grief to know that they're still with me and I'm still holding them in my heart. Oh, that got mushy. I'm sorry. <laughs> For those of you who know me in real life know that this is about the time I would tell a fart joke just to make, <laughs> make it less awkward. I'm not going to do that here. All right. Well, thank you. And again, I, I hope, <laughs> I hope that wasn't too much for anybody listening. Um, yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's move on then. It's the end of the episode, so it's time for the death deck. But today, I'm going to pull a card from the end of life deck. Ta-da! Okay, I'm <laughs> shuffling them up. Okay, let's pull one out of the middle. Okay, this one is called quotable. What is one piece of advice or quote you would like to share with those you love? I, for me, 
my, I, I can think of a million quotes that I, I enjoy and live by, but um, if I were to give a piece of advice, and this is like every time I see that thing about like, if you could talk to your 12 year old self, what would you say? Stop taking everything so seriously. That uh, most of you know, I have a background in comedy and theater, so I, I like to be goofy anyway, but I, for the life of me, I don't know why I spent so much of my childhood and younger years just taking everything so gosh dang seriously. Stop. Life is too short for that crap. <laughs> have fun, be goofy. I'm not, there are times where, you know, being a, a jackass is not exactly the right thing to do, but overall, just for the love of Pete, you know, there are, there are things that need to be taken seriously, but there's so much that does not. So that would be, that would be my piece of advice is don't take things too seriously. Deal? Deal. Okay. <laughs> well, if you do need to take something seriously, like your mental health, uh, you should call BetterHelp. <laughs> I want to say a thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. BetterHelp, if you don't know already, is the world's largest therapy service. It's 100% online. It's totally, you know, it's not totally virtual because there's real people involved. But with BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists that can help you with all the different issues you need, like maybe grief. And to get started, super easy. You just go to their website and you answer a few quick questions about what you're looking for and what your preferences are with therapy. And then BetterHelp will match you with the exact therapist that's from their network that is perfect and custom tailored for you. You can reach out to them however works best for you. If it's chat, text, phone call, video call, Zoom, Skype, I don't know. I guess they have all that figured out. Uh, you can also message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it works for you. So if you work third shift and you want to have therapy at 7 a.m., awesome. They'll get somebody out there for you. But... If for any reason your therapist just isn't working out, you can switch to another one. No, no additional charge for that. That's free. Cool. Wish I'd have had that with my bad therapists. Anyway, <laughs> with BetterHelp, you'll get the same professionalism and quality you would expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who's custom picked just for you. There's more scheduling flexibility and a more affordable price. And you can get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp. If you go to betterhelp.com slash Nikki the death doula, and that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Nikki the death doula. Okay, sweet. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. Please follow me on the things. Follow me on the apples, on the Spotify's. Again, Stitcher's gone, but Google, Google uh, uh, podcasts or uh, I don't know, Podbean. Is that still out there? There's a lot of them. But go ahead and follow me on all those and leave reviews wherever you're listening. If you're on Apple, do the little star thing and then type a few words too because that helps more people find me. I got a beautiful email from one of my listeners telling me how much they appreciate what I do. And I would love more people to hear what I have to say, not just to hear myself talk, but because I kind of think what I'm saying might be a little important, if that doesn't sound too self-aggrandizing. <laughs> But I would love more people to feel comforted by this. Comfort care is what I do for a living. So I would love to have more people feel better. So please share this with people. And if you believe in what I do and you want to help me out, you can go to my Patreon page. Uh, it's patreon.com slash Nikki the Death Doula. You would really be helping me out. I can help provide pro bono work to people who can't afford my services. And, you know, keep this podcast going. Join the conversations. I post this on my socials. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and they're all Nikki the Death Doula. Yeah, so find me on all those. Follow me, comment, interact, because then that's the way algorithms work. If you get more interactions, more people see you, and I would like to reach out to more people. Uh, again, I'm not making a penny on this. This is all just because I want more people to feel better. Okay, enough of that. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful week, and remember, as always, your grief is yours. Feelings are valid. And grief doesn't always have to suck. <laughs> <laughs>